Hello, 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 good people, family. And we are back for part two of Exercising Your Right to Vote. What's happening, family? You're listening to the Unfiltered Lyman with BLT. Every week, we will reflect on our journey on trying to navigate between our parents' traditional culture versus American culture. Oh, gosh, boy. We are your hosts, Bertie, Lisa, and of course, Terry. Oh, yeah? No one is talking. So let's get unfiltered. We were last left off on the conversation with your, what was the conversation in your, with your parents and your household about politics since we're in the political time right now. We were in this heavy, heavy information segment here and we wanted to continue it again. And I just want to put out there, people, these are our views. These are what we discussed with our families. It is not factual, but these are just our views, our thought but again these are our views so ladies yes. thank you hi bertie you was on fire girl fire hey, hey. yes uh, holy stringer came into the closet at least the face is like what i know what's happening yeah let's let's get it started so i was asking you the question of I know, you know, we're talking about you should be accountable and, you know, do your research and be responsible to still vote. And we were talking about, you know, going into we're from a different culture. Right. And I think, Lisa, you brought up the point of, you know, our parents, when they came here, you know, their mindset was different. So and I was saying, like, well, compare, you know, African-American in this country with the slavery, not that the islands didn't have slavery, you know, but I feel like it's a difference. You know, from like the mindset here. So do you think also that plays a part of how they view, you know, politics, how they view like, well, we've had to go through so much to vote and it's still not stacked up right? Yes. And I think also, too, just to be clear, not that we did not have slavery in the, in the Caribbean mm-hmm. islands. Yes, we did. But I think our parents and our family's focus coming up here is, hey, we're coming to the U.S. for a better life. We want to raise our kids to have a better life than we have. So that's their focus, mm-hmm. right? Right. I feel as African-Americans, it's their focus is, okay, they're already here, so they don't have to worry about trying to survive, being in this country Mm -hmm. it's their trials and tribulations are different Mm -hmm. you know their family trials and tribulations with slavery is passed down because you're passing that information down to your children your grandchildren and it's not to say that we didn't have it it's just that that's not the focus in the forefront Mm -hmm. that's what i feel yeah so then when they get here and then once they get themselves acclimated once they get their papers together then they have the right to vote. Then they start getting into the politics and understanding the government and things like that. So they're, I feel like their focus is a little bit different than African-American. Right. I also feel like for me, for Haitians, I would say, again, my viewpoints is the fact that because, and I don't know, you know, I'm not good at history. I'm not good at dates. So people... Please let me know. But I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of like the West Indies Island got out of slavery before African-Americans here. Like Haiti was independent a long time. So I feel like maybe they have a longer history staying in this mindset. And then that affected maybe the way they view politics, maybe the way. And then I wanted to bring up, do you also think like, you know how we talk in all culture, like our parents, there are certain things they don't talk about. Mm -hmm. So even though like it's passed down, but do they talk about how to maybe overcome that? Or do you think they are having the conversation, like you said, Terry, oh, nothing's going to change. So we're just not going to exercise our rights because it's really not nothing going to change. Well, I th- I think for parents, like the information that I got was a little bit different. However, I noticed that when I when I did ask the question, 
here. They are more active here in the United States than they were there. You know, and speaking to my father, he says that um, they were just like two candidates and it was either like you pick one or the other that they felt that it would do the best. Here you have options. You know, there's, there's a there's a whole line of people that uh, you can choose from. And, you know, right now, I mean, and there's more coverage here than when he said when he used to vote and when he was in Trinidad. So basically, I think back then it was more simplified. Here it is more exposed, if I can say so myself, is more exposure, all the details, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, if, mm-hmm. if I can say that. So with that being said, I believe that they're more active and they have more of a voice here and they're making their voice yeah. be heard here. Here. Than back yes. there. Yes, that is true. You agree with that, Lisa? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. And then you have some parents, like I have some Caribbean friends that their parents actually literally split their time here between back home mm-hmm. and the U.S. And those parents are a little bit more involved in the Caribbean politics than the U.S. because they're spending their time half and half. And especially the ones that split their time half and half, they have businesses back home. Mm-hmm. So when you have businesses back home, you definitely have to be involved in politics Correct. and know what's going on. So that's the difference. And this, yeah, there's so many different levels right. to this. I think you're right. Cause I think you were saying the main point, cause like I remember growing up in my household and I don't know if that happened to you guys back in the day where there used to be jute boxes for box radio. You actually had to go in the, you know, like the big old box, like the boom box. Right. So yeah. I remember in my household, like I remember clearly Every day, my parents used to put like AM station that had news from Haiti and they would listen to like the news and events straight Mm -hmm. from Haiti. And even like my aunt, when we spent time together, like she listens religiously to what's happening over there. But like you said, I think it goes back to your point of like how you are now because you have things that are affecting you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of those people from the eye, like I know from my family, they still have homes, they still have land, they still have things that they're very much like, you know what I'm saying? You have to still be connected to, again, what's going to happen, who's doing what. So I think it goes back to your point of you involved with the politics that affects you in a sense, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Yes. So, Bertie, let me ask you this question. Being that your mom is back, your mom is in Haiti, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so is she heavily involved right now in the political aspect of it? No. Okay. Because I feel like, like there's some people, like my mom, she'll listen to it and people will tell her stuff. But when it comes to like being involved she's one of again she's very conservative and as Mm. far as being religious so god Mm -hmm. will take care of everything god and there's nothing wrong with that Mm -hmm. but when it comes she was never like that so it wasn't like until my dad came like in the picture my dad will be the one listening to politics and having conversation Mm -hmm. with his friends when you know you kids you sit around like he was more into those conversations than she was um my aunt though her older sister she is more involved and I I feel like if she was there she would be more but she's the one who's more involved and makes it a mission to know what's going on makes it a mission but I think it's just because um she was around on political leaders and things like that and she just likes that but my mom not I I feel like and again it goes back to you don't want to rock the boat too you have to be controversial on certain things Mm -hmm. and my mom is maybe not the person that I would say would want to be controversial. My aunt doesn't care. So, nice. do you, do you feel, nice. so, <laughs> so B, do you feel that it, your mom will take a stance because she feels like, you know, something like you said, she doesn't want to be controversial and, you know, it doesn't make any sense to say anything because they're going to do what they want to do anyway. Do you mm-hmm. feel that that is her stance? Um, I, Yes and no, and I feel like because they've been through, so if you know a little bit about the the Haitian history Mm -hmm. and their politics, Mm -hmm. is there's so much of, there's, like, they've had so many presidents, right? And like you said, some of them start to do good, and there's so much, like, the people 
again, every president that's been, from a, as far as I can remember, besides the dictatorship of, you know, the last ones, they've voted for people, right? The country comes out, they vote, hey, we want this person because they're good. And then, like, not even midway through the person's term, they want them out. They want, that's why, like, there's so many chaos every two years in Haiti because they're like, oh, but the people in Haiti will exercise their rights and the country goes in turmoil. And it's like after halfway through their their, their term, they want to kick the person out. Yeah, but isn't that also like when we were discussing the last episode, it's like they promised all these things and then right. they got in office and they didn't and now we're stuck with them? Right. Well, I yeah, guess the people, they're like... The people in Haiti don't, though. The people in Haiti will actually, like, not the people, because I, I want to say, like, most, they call it the gangs, and I don't know if I'm right or not, but it's just like if that administration no longer serves, then people start taking to the street. People start, you know, killing people. People start destroying stuff, burning stuff in Haiti to tell this person to get out of office. So it's not oh, like it's not. how America, yeah, it's very like they shut down the country. People have to stay at home. Like it gets to that level of we no longer want you in office. You need to get out. But the thing is, is the is the poor people or the middle class people that suffer, right? Because yeah, because if you're burning businesses and burning homes, nine times out of ten is them, because the ones that are rich are in compounds. Yes, or they taking the first flight ticket out until they like, oh, we're gone. You know, there are in a section of Haiti where that stuff doesn't come. So I feel like my mom, she keeps to herself. She knows what's going on, but she keeps to herself. Um, just because they've been through so much with the history, with the politics, and, like, it goes back to, again, I feel like also the same mindset that some African-Americans have. It's like it's never going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, you put your hopes in somebody, and it's the same thing. But she mm -hmm. will tell you, like, she still loves her country. She still mm -hmm. believes in, you know, she's a businesswoman. She still believes in those things. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to make a stand where the cycle repeats itself. It hasn't changed, if that makes sense. So there are similarities then, mm -hmm. really, between... Because right. I feel like politics, and let me know, even though we talk about politics and we're from different culture, but I feel like politics as a whole, right? When you think politics, people mostly think corruption. I could be wrong. But no, I you're feel right. Like <laughs> okay. Say it again that is there. a fact. That is a fact. Yes, I am saying it is a fact. Again, this is our view, folks. Our <laughs> view is only just remember. And I feel like it doesn't matter what country or nation you are in, politics across the board is crooked, corrupted, and goes back to Lisa, your father, why he's not involved in politics because of the fact that when you're trying to do good, uh, oh, I have a perfect story for this segue. So I have a cousin of mine, and she's probably going to know she listens to this, but hey, cuz, I'm not going to name no name. She has a brother in Haiti that wanted to run for um, one of the seats in Haiti, right, in their, their, their town. And the thing is, he wanted to do good, right? He wanted to build roads. He wanted to do all this stuff. And it's crazy because the people in his community did not vote for him. They voted for another crooked person that took all their money. So it goes also in that mentality of jealousy, I feel, also. So even though we put it all in politics, but we as a people sometimes don't put the right people in place, too. You understand what I'm saying? Because literally he did this campaign and stuff like that, and the people didn't show up for him. Wow. Because they were like, well, who are you? You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now, you, like she was telling me stories, now the person that they have put in that office, they were like, oh, he's not doing nothing. He's not building nothing. And he was looking like, uh, what y'all telling me for? Because y'all had the opportunity for the big truck to come and, you know, hey. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> you hear that, right? The honorary big truck just passed by for the foolishness oh. is corruption. Bertie, let me... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, so let me ask you this when we talk about corruption. So do you think like if we know corruption exists in politics, right? Doesn't take away from exercising your right. But really think about it. Year after years, after years, after years, after years, after years, you hope, you pray. Think about the leaders like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Jr., like all these things, right? The history, right? And you're still looking years later, even my son, 
that's like a teenager knows there's there's corruption in politics right Mm -hmm. from what he sees what he hears especially with how social media is with you know everything that's put out there with this president and with this administration like everything so my thing is how do you deal with that how do you deal with that you do, you can't get away from it. You can't, mm-hmm. you cannot get away from it. It is like that goes hand in hand with the politics, sad, but true because any which way you look at it, there is some level of corruption, whether it is small or whether it is big, it is still there. Okay. Because no Everybody who has a seat or who has to make a decision, it is all about power. And with that power, anybody who wants to hold that power, they will do whatever it takes. Because you ever hear people say that you get drunk with power? It, it, uh-huh. it, it, yes. So they want that. They want to be able to have that hand to be able to say, you know something? If I squeeze, you're going to feel it. Okay. Uh-huh. So, yes, it's sad, but it is true. And we, the middle class or the poor people, we are stuck in the middle. Oh, damn. We are the meat in the sandwich, okay? And we're getting squeezed. Oh, man. (laughs) For us, a lot of times, and this is why I can understand We get weary. The people Mm -hmm. in the middle, we get weary and we get tired. It's like, how much more do we have to do? We're trying to change. We're trying to work together. But still, but still. Mm -hmm. And that's why we lose people along the way. You know something? Oh, forget about it. You know something? I'm done with it. You know, ain't nothing going to happen. Ain't nothing going to change. And this is why we always get back to square one. What do you think, Lisa? I mean, I would like to think, especially with... uh, uh, in the U.S. right now, I would like to think with social media, social media is actually putting people on front street and mm-hmm. it's actually a form of holding people accountable. So selfishly hope that those that are in politics carry their promises out. Yeah, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. No, I, I honestly feel like that because I feel like social media now is really holding people accountable, putting them on front street. So I'm just secretly hoping that Sarah, Sarah got her hand raised. No, go ahead. Sarah. No, Lisa, go ahead. Lisa, I'm, 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 I gotta jump in here. Okay, <laughs> jump in. I know that you sit down and you light a candle every night, praying that things will change. <laughs> However. Okay. Uh, Exactly. I guess. But you know, as well as I know, that we are still putting certain people on Front Street. And guess what? They deny it to the end. I ain't naming no names. We know who we're talking about. All right. Okay, then. So, and each person, each time we put people, you know something? Social media, yes, it is good for that. They do put it out there so that everyone can see, okay? so because then it becomes receipts. It becomes receipts at this point, right? You're right. It it does. Okay. Okay, and that's a great thing. But, Lisa, if you put the light on and ain't nobody scattering and they standing mm-hmm. there like, yeah, uh-huh, and what? Then what? Then we, 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 we back to the same thing. Well, let me ask you this. Is it because there's nobody that looks like us, too? Let's be honest with politics in the U.S. Back it's home, not a lot. Yeah, because back home, I feel like they look like us and they still doing us foolishness, right? Mm-hmm. So then all the years, you know, what has really changed? I think back home, maybe that's why the people feel more egregious in a sense because you look like us you are people right and you're supposed to do for us good and i feel like here maybe in a sense why black people or us of color don't feel is because like you don't look like us so i'm not gonna really trust you i'm not going in front if i know it's like it's better to know the enemy within so if i know you don't look like us so you haven't experienced our pain so why am i gonna have hope in a system that wasn't designed, first of all, with me in mind as a person. You know what I mean? We have a responsibility, but at the same time, I feel like we could say, yes, you should exercise your right, and we're not trying to go in the core deepness of it, but there's really questions. I feel like when I sit down with people of color, they have these questions. You understand Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At the core of the heart, it's like, 
even if I exercise my right, but I don't believe, is it worse off not to vote or to vote because of the fact that I'm like, I don't believe in this system. It's not set up for me to succeed. They don't look like me. I could vote and it's like I'm voting for the same devil. You understand what I'm saying? Like I, don't I do. So the next thing is, do we encourage more of us to get into politics? But are we going to get corrupted? That's a very good point. Like go back in history. The thing is, how many of us, like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, there's been great people of power in the movement, even the movement now. And the thing is, what happens when you take us and you put us in a level of power and money? Do we forget our roots? You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just Yeah, but then it goes back to family. I think there are some good people out there that are grounded. They have their family supporting them. Their family remind them and keep them in check. I'm not saying they 100 Lisa. But they, there are those that have good intention also, too. Right. And the people with the good intention, here's the thing. You are vocal. You come forward. You want to be to do the right thing and be honest. It's either you get taken out mm. or you get or you, somebody paying you. It's either or. There's no middle. There's no middle. You really believe that? I'm just asking. Terry does. I believe that... There's no middle where you could be right here and you good because either somebody wants to, you know, want to do away with you and they're making all these attempts or. Or my pre. There you go. There you go. You see, it's, it's again, it's the bacchanal. I do think the younger generation coming up, I think there's a few good ones out there that are really trying to get the message out there. And I really feel there has to be a few good ones out there. There has to be that want to make a difference. Well, but a few, a few good ones in compared to the thousand, Lisa, like think about that, like a few good ones. Yeah. But the hopelessness of it too, at the end of the day, I think sometimes it's a lot to say, okay, yeah, I want to do good. But are we going to support them? Are we going to stick with them? Are you? Are we going to boost them up? Are we? You know what I mean? Like because yeah. the thing about it is, I'm sorry to say, but I hear more about the black politicians that don't do good in the news than good ones. I don't know right now any because all the time, every time, like you hear the ones that are doing good, then all of a sudden it's like it's like oh. You know, they're they're doing this wrong. They're doing that wrong. They, whatever, they frauded the people. Like, I hear more about those, unfortunately, not that yes. I think our opposite, you know, counterparts don't do the same. But when it comes to our people, I feel like I hear more that, those news than the good news of the ones that are making a difference. No, That's you're just, absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Matt, you know something? Wait a minute, Lisa stop. Don't, Lisa, 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 face don't. Know. There's only <laughs> one, one person, one person, matter of fact, one? two people, two, two people, yes, two people that I can, for myself, Okay, and I'm speaking Mm -hmm. for myself that I can say that have done the right thing, that have shown positivity, shown a different way, and they stuck to their guns, that have walked the right path, continue to walk the right path. And that those people are Barack and Michelle Obama. I will give you that. I will give you that. They have stuck to their guns. Nothing that they, nothing that people try to pin on them. Nothing. No, you don't hear nothing bad. No, nothing. No, nothing. No, no, no. Exactly. No more. Those. But I'll tell you this. Mm-hmm. They, yes, they did walk the straight and narrow. So this is a, this is another part of the conversation is people not allowing their agenda to get through. Mm. Hate. Them. So that's the next thing, right? Their gender not getting through because of other corrupt people. Thank you for bringing that up because that's actually what I was thinking of. Like there are good people out there. It's just others that are not letting their agenda get through. Okay. Now my other thing is like you said, with others not bringing their agenda, because when you follow the story of Michelle and, and um, Barack, right? There's a lot of obstacles that came against them. Let's be honest about that. And let's be honest about, you know, as black folks, we talked about pulling one another, right? So the thing is, goes back also, there's a point in time where they were trying to do good. And sometimes it didn't look like that because at the end of the day, you're still in politics, right? Mm -hmm. You still have to play the game of politics to get what you need to get 
right? That's just how it is. Whether you like it or not, it is what it is. So the thing is, as Black folks, when it didn't look like they were doing, you know, what they're they were supposed to do or wanted to do, then we automatically were like, ah, oh, start criticizing them. You understand what I'm saying? Like, because I feel like in the conversation when they were in office, like I felt like I did hear a lot of people like, oh, we're all for them and all this stuff. And then the minute people realize it's politics, like, I don't think people realize, yeah, he's the, they're the first, but, but it's still politics when you get an office, right? You yes. Still, and so. then this goes back to those doing their homework. If you do your homework, you will understand that they have to push their agendas through certain chains of commands, certain pathways, right? Mm-hmm. Give and take. Like, you, yes. you, can't, you have to give give and take. You can't, mm-hmm. like, as much as they might want to do this, but they have to be like, okay, you're going to do, you. we want you to do this, but we need this in return. Okay. So the thing is, they have to look at balancing. You understand what I'm saying? Like you said, the agenda, because you can't push your agenda and think your agenda is going to come through and everybody's going to sign off. Everybody's going to want a piece of, okay, well, what are you going to do for me if I give you that? Yeah, and there was a lot. A lot of people did not allow their agenda to go through. A lot. So then it looks to us. Mm-hmm. They're not doing what they said. Middle class, lower class, they're not doing what they said. But again, you have to educate yourself. So me, I didn't give them that much slack because I felt like, all right, I know. Even even the day that they got into office and got elected, I was like, yo, these people are not going to let them do anything. I said that from day one. Mm-hmm. They're so, not going to let them do anything. Have you guys watched this movie? And maybe it's a good movie because I think it, it ties into this. There's an Eddie Murphy movie. On the League of Gentle, what is it? The movie where he goes into politics? Who movie is oh that? my gosh! A long time ago, um, Eddie Murphy goes into politics. Oh, a League of Distinguished Gentlemen, or um, oh, that sounds familiar. I think I know what you're talking you know what about. Yes, I think I know. Yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. They talk about that, and in them, it's such a good movie. I think like we, you people should watch it because it talks about like the voting and about like when he first got it. Because remember, he ran as Ron Johnson on his name and yes. won because of his name. And then when he got in office, you know, he was just like, oh, because it was about getting money and power. And then when he got there, he realized like, hey. There's actually much more. There's politics. You know what I'm saying? This conversation about the old boys club, like, oh, you want this, but we want you to do this. Like, what are you going to, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just thought about this movie. Sorry. No, you're right. It's called The Distinguished Gentleman. You're correct. Yes. That's a very good movie. Talk about that. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But um, another thing also, too, I wanted to bring up, right? Our families that are living abroad. Mm-hmm. What are they saying about our country's government right now? Oh, you don't want to know. My mom's telling me to come down for a fly ticket. I'm good. She she says that. She, no, I'm. it's so funny because as much as everything that's going on in Haiti, my mom is like, it's not a bad country. You still will be better off there than you are here. Wow. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because again, like, it's set up differently, right? It's better the devil you know, right, than the ones you don't. Because, again, she feels like it goes back to they look like us, right? You know what I'm saying? The, mm-hmm. They look like us. These are my people. This is my home. Here, and we could segue into a different uh, how this land came to be. But she feels like this is home. This is like Haiti is built on the back of black. You know what I'm saying? Like this is our our country. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. America, it's like mm, not um, again. My opinion. You just you know black folks. The way we got here is it yeah. your home. So yeah, exactly. No, I I got you because I tell you what, my cousins in Canada. <laughs> And it's funny. <laughs> First of all, I mean, this is a whole nother other conversation, but even growing up and spending the summers in Canada, the news is always different than what we that see. That is correct. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. different. And I feel as though I learned more information about my country in the summer times when I went home. Mm-hmm. And to piggyback on top of the pandemic that we're going through, Okay, I didn't hear anything about the pandemic. I go to Canada in February for a funeral. 
go to my family's house, all TVs on in the house. It's like, okay. So basically the pandemic, <laughs> how it was on TV for us uh-huh. in April mm-hmm. and all news channels were flipping out, waking out like, Oh my God, we're pandemic. Shut yeah. everything down. When I went to Canada in February, that's how the TV channels were. And I'll never forget all the news stations and everything. And I never forget me and my brother walked in to my aunt's house and was like, what in the hell is going on? What, what do you mean there's a pandemic? What, really? What, yeah. Wow. That's how we found out about it. I was like, wait, what the hell is going on? What is this? I was oh like, my oh, goodness. shit. My cousins was like, you got to go to Costco and buy out everything. And me and my brother <laughs> looking like, what? Lisa, you lucky we didn't get stuck up there, you know? No, uh-huh. we did. And actually, to be honest, um, one of my other girlfriends, we went to United Emirates in December. <laughs> and to be honest with you, we just got back by the skin of our mm-hmm. tail. Wow. Mm-hmm. Real talk, because that was in December. That's so true. actually, yeah, we just got back on. And even then, coming back, I didn't hear nothing. Mm-hmm. So it's not uh-huh. till I, I got back here and was calling my people as soon as I land. Uh, yo, uh, I think we got a situation. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But is it because like you feel like again the news back home, they're looking at it from a different you know what I'm point saying? of view. From a, they, yes. 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 Yeah. They're looking from a different point of view. And let's keep it real. It's the world news. The world mm-hmm. news is going to give us more information than the mm-hmm. filtered news that's here in the United States. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna end that conversation right there. But yes. Our families, I feel like my, well, my families, they know more what's going on. What do they think about what's going on? They think it's pure fuckery right now. <laughs> and as far as they're concerned. Say that one more time. What is it? Pure fuckery. All okay? right, ladies and gentlemen, and that also, is unfiltered. You heard it here. Yes, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and to keep it real, they were like, yo, y'all are fucking up our shit over here. Mm-hmm. Mm. straight up <laughs> their mouth. when we go to Canada they refer to us Yankees mm-hmm. y'all Yankees are fucking it up for us over here really wow oh yeah wow. oh yeah they'd be like oh the Yankees are here <laughs> it's true it's yep. very yep. very true <laughs> they, wow. they'd be like what are y'all doing down there I'm like yo don't look at me mm-hmm. wow mm-hmm. that's craziness Oh yeah, they are like how what how did y'all allow that to happen? Y'all? Okay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but yeah, no, real talk, they really say how did you allow that to happen, Lisa? Me? Right, like your one vote, right? <laughs> like you carrying this whole thing on your shoulders, man. The whole thing. The whole Lisa? thing on my shoulders. But it's all good though. I'm gonna keep voting. I'm gonna keep going to the polls. I'm gonna keep researching all the candidates. Mm. Yes. I'm gonna keep on doing it. Yes. Yeah, you have to. You have to do your part. And at the end of the day, like you said, there are some good ones. Um, and those good ones, maybe it's our responsibility to lift them up a little yes. bit. Yes. See, but, thank you, B. See, but, Terry was like, no. But no, I'm saying it's 50-50 gamble. I'm going to lift you up. But then at the same time, you're going to get there. I think that the fact is we could do and lift them up, right? We can lift them up. But it's just not knowing once we lift them up and they get there and uh, they get that. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Well, you know what? Then we need to get out there and talk to the councilmen. We need to get out there, have the conversations with them. And maybe we need to get out there and hold them accountable. Yes. And to the point that when it's time to vote again, I'd be like, sir, knock, knock. Uh, yeah, you got to go because you didn't do what you said you was going to do. And maybe if there's more of that going on, yes. then maybe people come in office and be like, yo, I really got to get this shit done. Yes, I, I agree. And Terry, Go. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen just so you know or let me put a disclaimer out there yes it was a hard no however however <laughs> i agree we do have to lift them up my concern is that i need for you to say what you're going to do don't stand on the pulpit or don't stand in on the podium in front of everybody and tell everybody, okay, I could do this. I could do it. I can move a mountain. And then when we elect you, you, you not even rolling up your sleeves to move the mountain. That's the issue that I have. 
That is the issue mm-hmm. that I have. Yeah. Okay. So if you know you cannot do it, do not make that hard promise. Say, the, you know something, I'm going to make a concerted effort too, because we know that you're making the effort to move that mountain. But don't say, oh, you elect me. I'm definitely going to move this mountain because this is ridiculous. The mountain shouldn't be here. All right, then. You get elected and then nothing I'm happened. Elected. But Terry, but Terry, you just mentioned, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that look my question is <laughs> she's giving the look people i know she is so my question to you is again if you know that what other choice do you have because they all do that so my thing is if you know going in they've all promised the mountaintop but can't deliver what what are you left to do <laughs> You know something? Knock on their door at late at night and say, <laughs> you said you were going to do X, Y, and Z, and you didn't. Are you, what's up? Come through. <laughs> if not, I'm going to sit out here and petition in front of your house to have you elected out the next go around. Sorry. That's a good point. That's true. Uh, end statement, period. Okay, then. So <laughs> how diligent are we? How diligent mm. are we going to be to do our part that mm. if if that doesn't happen, if they made a promise and they do not keep their promise, and when it comes time for re-election, again, how diligent are we going to be to say, okay, you know something? We got to make sure that the next person definitely is going to be, you know, a, a person of their word. Because what happens is that that's how you lose the people because then they say, ah, you know what? Too many promises. I don't have time for it. I ain't bothered because ain't nothing going to happen. That's where mm-hmm. we lose. That's where, that's where the issue is right there. The biggest issue. We're losing people because nothing is happening. And like Bertied said, because of the color of our skin, it is not designed for us. So that's why people feel that we don't have no skin in the game. And we have a lot of skin in the game. Mm-hmm. We just mm-hmm. don't realize that we have a lot of skin in this game. And once we band together, because there is so much power in numbers, there's power in prayer, we can go and take this and move that mountain ourselves. Lisa, 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 go ahead, because you know I want to go there, but I'm going to let you all go there on that one. Go ahead. Stick it okay. together as black folks. Let's go. All right. Let's I got go. a solution. <laughs> it's not my solution. It's a solution that already got started in 2020. Actually, let me backtrack for a sec. It's a solution that got re-energized in 2020. It's hit them in their pocket. Mm. Buy black. That's what you got to do. Mm. Buy black and you stay black. That's mm. what I'm going to hit you in your pocket. All right, you ain't going to listen to me? Fine. I ain't got to knock on your door late at night. I'm going to hit you in your pocket. Mm. But do you think that that's something that if, even though we want to hit them in their pocket, I, I, do you feel like we should only use that power for that or all the time? Should we all? Well, like- I think I think we need to do it all the time. First of all, buy, buy, buy black. Right. Mm-hmm. We need to create more black businesses and those black businesses need to support us and we need to support the black businesses. Mm-hmm. If we do those things and then lastly, educate our children about finances, mm-hmm. start telling them to buy black, mm-hmm. invest in black and mm-hmm. have your own business. And if you start that from the children and start that with us, then we can make a difference. However, I just want to buy in black will uh, alter their green. There we go. You're right. <laughs> but there's oh. a repercussion behind that. I just want you to know that. What's the repercussion? What is it? Any time that we band together to do something, what do they do? They they find out where the weak link is, and then they start to work on that weak link, and then everything does disassemble. So if we're going to do it, we have to stand strong in it and keep on pushing. We cannot, cannot disassemble. We have to keep on going. That's going to be another episode, too, because I feel like maybe we should talk about from our experience versus our, you know what I mean, our, um, our West Indies Caribbean of, you know, bending together because I know, you know, a lot of the West Indies Island, the way they stuck together to get, get their independence compared to like here, you know, you know what I mean? Like maybe we should talk about why 
why is it that we don't stick together? Why is it that we, we like, you know, it, it's hard for us to, like you said, Terry, to stick it out for the long haul, no matter what happens, like where, you know, there's like learned gap. behavior. It's learned behavior or lack of education. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes. Because if you're in a there. home that your parents are not encouraging you to buy black or stay together, support one another, support your brother and sister, if you're in, that's not set in the home, why would I think that? Hmm. Right. True. I mean, nobody at home was telling me how to be a, in a circus. <laughs> 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 my, my question was my question was gonna be Lisa you wanted to be in the circus no no not actually not really but I mean I was just using an example like right, no one right, taught right, me right. to be a trapeze artist we right. weren't having we weren't having that conversation in the house so guess what that never crossed my mind right I know it sounds simple. Uh, are they even having a conversation though? I feel like do people no. even have conversation about the deep? No, rootedness? you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no. Within and all. then it goes back to our Caribbean roots, where kids are seen and not heard. So mm. we weren't having the conversation in the first place. That's why we say no one's talking. So let's get unfiltered, right? Yeah, uh-huh. that's right. On that note, folks, we thank you for listening. You know, there's lots more to say. We don't know. It might be a part three. Comments, um, anything that you want us to talk about related to this, because this is such a wide, broad topic. Uh, again, this is our viewpoints. We want to make that clear. Please comment. Let us know. Yeah. yeah. And still remember, everyone have the conversations and exercise your right to vote. Let's go, Terry. <laughs> no, and people, wait a minute. Yes, we have to go out there and vote. Please do the right thing and make sure that before you cast your, your vote, know who you're voting for and know why you're voting. And ladies and gentlemen, we are out. All right, people, the Bacchanal Queens, we are ready to leave. But before we leave, we would like to thank you for joining us this week on Unfiltered Lyman with BLT. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and join our Facebook page. As always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to bring you fresh, exciting content. See you next Thursday, same time, same station. Unfiltered Lyman Lyman with BLT is edited and produced by Unfiltered Lyman with BLT.